Okay, everybody, moving on to the last topic of this unit on moles. Uh, and this is a little bit more involved because at this point, we've been talking about reactions where you have one reactant and you're going to relate that to the product where one is an excess. Uh, and we told you this, okay, or you're relating the product to another reactant. So you're always relating one quantity to one other quantity. When we move on a little bit, we're going to talk about some a different type of problem where we talk about something called the limiting reactant. And when that happens, when a reaction is performed with two more reactants, so let's just say I gave you two reactants and I wanted you to know how much product we were going to produce from that. Um, instead of giving you one and asking you based on that how much you're going to produce or giving you a product and asking you how much of one reactant, we're going to have a situation where we often encounter a situation where one of the reactants will run out. So there's two reactants or three reactants, and you're going to do a reaction, and they're going to continue to react in the correct mole ratio until one of them there's no, is, is no longer there, right? right? Because we've converted them to products. So at this point, it's a little bit more complicated on how I actually calculate this, and there's many ways to do it. Um, and I'm going to show you a quick, a, a, an easy way to do it where you can actually see it as a picture and you can see it as a, as, as a way to do it as a whole. Okay. Uh, at this point, what's going to happen is that this reactant that runs out is going to be called a limiting reactant because it's going to, be, it's going to limit how much you can make. All right. So the reaction then stops uh, at that point. And it's useful to be able to do this because then we can figure out, hey, where am I going to run at? What's going to run out? Um, and how much product I'm going to make at that point. Okay. So for instance, if you have, you know, a certain amount of eggs, but you have plenty of flour and sugar and you were making a cake, like at what point would you run out of the ingredients? And when you run out of those ingredients, which ingredient runs out? And at that point, how much product could you make at that point? So again, there's a lot of reactants flying around so we can figure out how to do this. All right. Um, so let's define a couple things first. All right. So first of all, the limiting reactant, the limiting reactant is the reactant that completely runs out. All right. After the reaction ends. All right. And that's going to limit what you can do. So that's going to determine the amount of product you possibly can make. All right. Second, the excess reactant, okay, or reactants, okay, is the reactant or reactants that's left over after this limiting reactant is expired and after it goes to zero. Okay. And that's really what we want to do. We want to find out where you know, that reactant runs out and how much product may, and we make when we do this. All right. So if you were playing around with, uh, you know, wood maybe burning in a stove or wood burning in a wood burning fireplace, um, what would be the limiting reactant? Well, you know, the wood would be the limiting reactant because that would be burning. But the air, the oxygen that's burning here would be the excess reactant, right? Because we know we have plenty of that. And that's kind of an easy thing. I just wanted to give you an example. Okay, how many burgers you can make from this? Well, you can figure that out on your own. Again, if you have a certain amount of buns and a certain amount of cheese and, you know, three, you know, three sections of lettuce, let's just assume you get three, uh, you know, one of these for every one, we can probably see that if we're going to have, we're going to make a burger, we're going to need two, one of these, one of these, one of these, and one of these to make a burger, we can see that we're gonna, definitely going to run out of lettuce. So lettuce would be your limiting reactant here. All right. Um, so how do you actually do this? And what I usually do is so use something called something called an ice box. And um, when we have this ice box, what we do in this case is, and again, this is going to stand for for something to do. And we make like a little chart. So let's just say I had the let's just say I had the question: How many grams of water can be made from 100 grams of hydrogen and 100 grams of oxygen? We can see we get the we get the reaction is here. Okay, and notice that this is different from what we've done before because in this case we're actually asking you how many grams of water can be made, so that would be our product, and we're given two reactants. So we're given two reactants this time, where before we were given one of them and asked to find the product. That's easy because we can we can just relate it on that product. But in this case, we're going to have to relate two of them, so it becomes a little more complicated. So I think this is the best way to do it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to set out a little chart. Okay, and in this chart, we're going to label, and again, there's, there's three letters, I, C, E. We're going to start with the letter I, and letter I stands for initial. So just so you know what this means, init initial means I, okay? And in this column, and again, each column would represent a column for that particular compound, and again, or element, and if we had other, and, and other elements, we'd make other, we'd make other co uh, columns here. Okay, in the initial box, we're going to write down what we're given, 
Like, what do we have at the beginning before we even start this? Now, we're starting with 100 grams of hydrogen, and we're starting with 100 grams of oxygen. Okay, and in this case, in order for us to really do any work here, we're going to have to change to the mole right away. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to immediately run change to the mole. Uh, and what this column is, and these notes on the side are really to show you why you're doing these columns. Okay, so really the I row is what you have in the beginning. So if we take 100 and we divide it by 2 grams per mole, which is, again, the GFM, and 100 divided by 32 grams per mole, we're going to get the following mole amount. So we'll, we'll have 50 moles of hydrogen to start. We'll have 3.125 moles of oxygen to start. And we're going to start with no moles of water. Again, this is initial, so we didn't start the reaction yet. So we're just sitting here with our ingredients with no product. Okay, so that's the initial part, what you have in the beginning. Get that out first. Again, you have to be in moles. Secondly, we go into the change row. Now, the change row is when you actually start reacting. Okay, now when you react, we know that we're going to re react in a 2 to 1, okay, to 2 re ratio. And that what simply means is that two particles of hydrogen are going to react with one particle of oxygen to produce two particles of water. Now, we have to think about this a little bit because we know that by particle, the hydrogen is going to go down by two, by two times the amount of oxygen because it's a two to one ratio. So for every two of these, you lose two with one of these and you make two of these. Okay. So we're going to set, we're going to represent the, the reaction of this is two go, going down by two, going down by one by decreasing our coefficients. Okay, by that amount. So I'm going to use a minus sign to represent the fact that hydrogen and oxygen go down by their coefficients of x. All right, so hydrogen go by we go down by a coefficient of x by two. Okay, oxygen will go down by one x. Okay, but the water you're going to make two new particles, so you're going to increase your products by that coefficient. So reactants always go down by negative the coefficient, and the products always go up by that amount. Okay, so notice that the 2 matches the 2 here, the 1 matches the 1x here, and the 2 matches the 2x here. Reactants go minus, products go plus. And again, the, the arrow separates your reactants from products. All right, now here's where you have to really pay attention. What we're going to do next is we're going to add these two rows. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to find out wh at what point you react in this mole ratio that equals 0. We want to find out which one of these reactants is going to run out because the one that runs out is going to end is going to be eventually is the one that's going to produce the product and that's the really really uh thing we need to worry about okay so if we take 50 moles and we subtract 2x from it so we're going to add this row add this row again we're not going to do much here because if we add 0 to 2x okay we're just going to get 2x so we're not going to do anything there okay or you could add it if you want to Okay, so notice I'm taking 50 minus 2x, setting that equal to 0, setting that equal to 0. Okay, and this becomes 2x. And now what I'm going to simply do is solve those little mini equations. Okay, so if I solve this for x, and again, simply what I'm going to be doing, just moving x to the other side, I'm going to get x equals 25 here. If we do a little algebra. Okay, this one's easy. This is going to be x equals 3.125. All right. So if I do that, I'm going to get my x equals 25, x equals 2.5, uh, 3.125. And what I'm going to do next in step four is pick the lowest value of x. Now, why am I doing this? Because that's the lowest value of x that produces the zero, all right? And that's the reactant that's going to run out. Okay, so this becomes the answer that you need. All right, now what am I going to do with this answer? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that amount into all the other x amounts. So this x is going to be plugged in for this x here. This x will be plugged in here. That's easy. And this plug is going to get plugged in for there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use those to answer in the end row. This is called the end. Okay. And this is after the reaction is over. And these are basically any answers. These are the answers to all the possible questions that you could be asked. Okay. So I will take 2 times 3.125, okay? I will take 3.125 minus 3.125, and guess what I get? I get zero. And I'm going to get 50 
minus 2 times 3.125. So notice all I did was substitute the lowest value of x right there. That's your target. Lowest value of x gets plugged into these things, okay? And now that will determine all my answers at the bottom row. So I will get 43.75 moles. That's going to be my excess reactant, which means after I start with 50 moles, after I'm done producing products, I'm going to have 43.75 moles of excess left, okay? Because this is the lowest value of X, that automatically means that this is the reactant that runs out. I'm going to label that the limiting reactant. And the limiting reactant, like we talk about, talked about before, has no moles left at the end, okay? And how much, again, well, I'm still looking for how many grams of water I can produce, and that was going to be 6.25 moles. So through two times, that would be 6.25 moles, Okay. And what's interestingly enough here, if I go back again, okay, if I have my final answers here, uh, again, it says how many grams of H2O. I'm sick, simply going to take my 6.25 very easily moles. I'm going to multiply by my gram formula mass of water, which is 18, okay? And I will end up with my grand total of about 13. I will be take 113 grams of water. Sorry, just that would be just with grams of H2O. Okay. All right, so a couple of things on the chart. Why does this chart work? Why is it so great? Okay, number one, you got to find that lowest value of X. That's the important thing. Okay, that's the really, really, that's a really important thing. Secondly, okay, a little quick, quick, quick thing you can do if you are inclined to do it. Right here, what you're essentially doing in this middle row is dividing the starting amounts by the coefficient, right? So basically, we're taking 50 divided by 2 and 3.125 divided by 1 and getting our answers. So although you can do this step here, a quick row, a quick way to get your x value is just simply to divide by the coefficient from the initial row. So if you remember to do that, you can. Okay. Make sure you pick the lowest value. The lowest value will be here. These are the amounts in moles of any possible product thing you can be asked. All right. So that's the chart. Uh, we'll do a quick example right now again to show you uh, quickly how to do this. But I wanted to show you like in, 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 in detail how to do this with some notes on the side. Again, you don't have to do this all the way through. Okay. So a quick example here. Let's do a quick example and then I'll let you do one on your own and I'll give you the answer for it. Consider the reaction 2AL. Uh, go into three chlorines and you're going to make 2ACL3. What I would do is always rewrite the equations. 2AL, okay, plus 3Cl2 goes to 2ALCl3, okay? And let's just quickly see what we have initially. So on my initial row, it says if a mixture of 1.5 moles of aluminum, okay, so I'm starting with 1.5 moles of aluminum, okay, and three moles of chlorine, so I have three moles of chlorine, okay? And again, I can go right into the chart here. Like the previous problem, I had it to convert to moles first. In this case, I don't because I'm already in the mole. Okay, what is the limiting reactant? So they want to know what the limiting reactant is, and they want to know how many moles of aluminum chloride can I make, okay? So I'm going to try to figure that out. Right now, I have none because my reaction didn't start yet, all right? So that's really my first row. So I can make my quick little columns, okay? Again, I can single out that column here. Make it real quick. Okay, and now I'm in my change row or my reaction row, my change. What's actually going to happen? Well, what's going to happen is I'm going to go down by two aluminums. At the same time, I'm going down by three chlorines. Again, the coefficient is my X value, right? And because this is a product, I'm going to be going up by two times that amount, okay? Now, I'm going to make this real quick here. I'm going to do a little shortcut. And I'm going to simply divide by the coefficient. So I'm going to set this equal to zero and, and, and again, set equal and, 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 and um, calculate x. However, I can do this really quickly by simply taking this and dividing it by 2. Okay? So I'm going to get 1.5 divided by 2. I'm going to get 0.75 here. And I'm going to get 3.0 divided by 3. I'm going to get x equals 1 here. Okay? And when I do that, I'm going to find out that the smaller volume of X is going to, smallest amount of X, I should say, is X point this. I'm going to reject this. That cannot be the answer. So now I have my answer that I need. 
Okay, and now I can figure out my answers for every compound or element that's in this problem. I'm simply going to take my x, feed it back into here and evaluate, feed it back into here and evaluate, feed it back into here and evaluate. Okay, so because this is the lower value of x, I'm automatically going to have no moles left. Okay, no moles left. That makes this the limiting reactant. I'm going to feed this back in here. I'm going to take 3.0 minus 3 times 1. Sorry, point 3 times 0 0.75. Okay, I'm feed that back into my little equation. Okay, and I'm going to get 0 0.75 moles of excess left. Okay, just in case the question asks you. Now, this question doesn't ask you that, but at least we got it. Okay, and this is going to be 2 times 0.75 because, again, 0.75 is going to be used for there. All right, and we're going to get 1.5 moles of aluminum chloride, which is what the question is asking. Let's just double check that. How many moles of aluminum chloride form? We have our answer. Okay, so that's a good way to do it. Again, a quick way to do it here is, to, is to, again, just dividing by the coefficient. Make sure you feed the lowest value of x back in and get your answer. Please make sure you always double check by going back and seeing what the question is asking. It's really important. All right? And, again, this would be your answers as your answer row or what's going on in the question. Okay? In example number two, I'm going to give you the, the answer to this. Okay? The answer to this one is if you do the work, um, the number of moles of water produced by the reaction is 4.2 moles of water. So that would be the answer for this, so you know how to do it. Okay, um, and that is the end. So I will talk to you soon, good luck.